Um, I don't know who you are, but you've made a big mistake, okay? <laughs> I'm an Avenger. I've called the other Avengers. You're an Avenger? Have I killed you before? <laughs> what? They all blur together after a while. You're not the one with the hammer. It's Thor. We get confused a lot. Similar body types. Who are you? Just a man who's lost a lot of time. Like you. Hey, pals. Welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. I'm Robert. And I'm Steve. <laughs> and yes, uh, Steve and Rob <laughs> are back. And we are back. I'm sorry if there's a long hiatus, everybody. But, you know, things getting away, trying to schedule things. But we're making this work. Yeah. So uh, this episode, long time coming. The movie has been out since February. Uh, it's probably still in the theaters to some degree. Uh, this episode, we're covering Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania that came out in 2023. The movie has been out for a while. And just to give you an idea, it had a 200 million box office budget wow. and has since grossed worldwide 474 million. So a lot of people were dubbing this as one of the uh, Marvel films that didn't succeed, but it did make its money of you now making the money back from its budget. And then obviously, you know, 274 million factor in promotion and advertising. It might have lost money, but yeah, I um, think this movie lost money. But nonetheless, we'll see what happens when it hits streaming. You know, it'll hit streaming. And yeah, it's actually on digital download now through Vudu. It's looking for its Blu-ray release come May 16th, I believe. And it'll be available through probably Disney Plus by that given time. So, yeah, yeah we we could easily go through this. So we're just going to talk about the, our thoughts about the movie itself overall. But with anything like we always do, let's talk about the synopsis. So, uh, Steve, you want to give us the synopsis? Sure. Ant-Man and the Wasp find themselves exploring the quantum realm, interacting with strange new creatures and embarking on an adventure that pushes them beyond the limits of what they thought was possible. Very vague, but yeah, yeah, but obviously just another continuation of an Ant-Man and the Wasp movie. Mm -hmm. So uh, obviously this movie takes off after certain other films so we don't take off right after ant-man and the wasp the original one we're taking place after endgame and probably i would say wakanda forever and all that good stuff yeah i would assume after doctor strange right yeah. and the multiverse of madness so i mean is it because i it could i mean we definitely know is it's after loki the uh the mm -hmm. uh Definitely after the Loki series. Show. Right, I know. Yeah. it's after the Loki series, but... I think it's... I, I think it's got to be... Well, I I don't know. I don't know where it fits in the timeline, because... Yeah. You're right, because... Well, we'll talk about it when we talk Obviously about Obviously, it is scenes. after Loki for the fact that we do get Kang. Correct. And that's the, right. the whole focus. And obviously, long after Endgame, because Cassie is playing with stuff now with Quantum, mm -hmm. due to her grandpa... <laughs> now she calls him grandpa yeah. and oddly enough like any other movie they do change like actors because we don't have the original cassie that we saw in and I, I had that i have that in my notes the line i i didn't catch it the first two times i watched this movie but i saw that I, I caught it in this one when modok sees her for the first time and he says oh cassie i didn't recognize you yep <laughs> it's like this time i caught it and i was just like oh i get it that's yep. meta <laughs> yeah, it's very meta. And they do that a lot in films, too. I noticed it's like, oh, sudden change. I guarantee you they're going to do something like that when Harrison Ford is Thaddeus Ross. <laughs> oh, mm, <boy>. Yeah. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> or they even did it in the uh, one of the Hulk. Right. He said something about, I was, in the last movie. He was they, that Hulk in it. He said something about I was a whole different person. Yes. Back then. <laughs> and yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, actually, no, that was during She Hulk, I think. When he the she, you're right, it was She Hulk. It, it was She Hulk when we covered that. that. Yeah, we both mentioned that, and that mm-hmm. was funny. All right. <laughs> All right. Now, we've already gotten into the discussion, but uh, obviously, uh, let's talk about our initial thoughts. What were your initial thoughts when you first saw the movie? Steve, you could go. Sure. Um, it was good. I don't I'm trying to think the the, the thing for me, like I knew it was going to have Kang in it and I knew it was going to be Jonathan Majors playing him because we we that had been all out. Uh, but I really went in almost unspoiled to this one. Uh, I didn't know about Bill Murray being in it so when i saw him i was just like oh it's bill murray and yeah. uh so it was uh really good it was uh, rob and i were talking before we started recording you know it's not the worst of the marvel movies i wouldn't put it up there with the best yeah of them <laughs> either it's it's in the middle somewhere you know it's good <laughs> <laughs> rob my thought on this is that um you know when you hear what's going on with this movie and how people feel about it, mm-hmm. I didn't feel that way at first. And what I mean by that is, you know, I went to see it. I was like, you know, this is fun. It's a fun movie. Yeah. But it wasn't, th- there was something missing about, you know, of it, it lacked. It definitely lacked something. There was something about it that just wasn't there. And when I finally, you know, when I saw it a few times, I say, okay, so this is what the first two movies had. The first two movies did have his uh who was it who was uh Michael Pena. Michael, Michael yeah. Pena was definitely yeah. missed in this particular Yeah, movie. I was I was Correct. just gonna say that. I wish and you know, I think the producers or the writers or somebody were saying that the reason he wasn't in it was because they couldn't find a way to make it make sense that he would be there. And I was okay. like I I and I, I but the more I thought about it, and especially this last watch, I was like, he could have just been having dinner with them. He just happened to be there when they're having dinner and when they go look at the thing. Yeah, know, he, they friends. could have done something like that. But I, mean, I felt like Michael Pena and I felt like the the rest of the crew that he had, even though it was comedic relief, it mm-hmm. was it was just kind of, you know, for me, Michael Pena was honestly the soul of that entire of those movies. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I say and I and I while, while I like, you know, Paul Rudd. And, you know, in his uh, portrayal of Ant-Man, it was Michael Pena who just made it very lighthearted. Because if you think about it, you are talking about somebody called Ant-Man, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so. You're the bug but Yeah, that, that was the one thing that I felt like this. I felt like this entire movie didn't really have any heart. It just kind of felt like it was a paint by numbers kind of movie where it's like. You know, if you ask an AI to uh, write you a uh, MCU movie, <laughs> this is probably what it would look like. Probably very much textbook. Yeah. Which leads me to mine. Just like you, Rob, when I walked in, I felt something was lacking. I was not. I was like, that was entertaining. Right. But there was something missing overall. Now, the cool part is, and the reason behind point behind this particular movie is to start into this whole nemesis for the Avengers that's coming up within this phase, which literally is Kang the Conqueror, which we already gotten from the Loki series. And we already right. know that Kang is going to be a dominant once again, even though we only got he who remains in that particular mm-hmm. show. And that's right. how we got introduced to him. And in, in the very last episode of that which is fine, but this was meant to give us a stepping stone of Kang and who he is and the multiple versions of him. Mm-hmm. So they they kind of knocked it out of the park with that, of giving us that and introducing us to it, the more darker side of Kang, unlike the softer side of Sears. So, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, and obviously uh, Michael Pena was definitely missing and that was something that I missed. Uh, we did get David Dost Malchian in the uh, the movie itself, which was cool because he was just a voice actor in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also had some comic relief in there, which I always liked. Oddly enough, it came from Hank Pym, of all people. I just which, like Ants. Which part is that? A lot of them. Uh, it's like them, like when Janet re- basically states, like, he goes, oh, you were, w-. she goes, I have needs. Yes, yes. And he yes. goes, Oh, I had dinner with this so and so. And it's like and her giving him the guidance on how to use the the ship. And then obviously when 
every once in a while, it's like, I like ants. Mm -hmm. You know, it was kind of like, it's great to have Michael Douglas, but he wasn't the grimacing character that he usually was before. And it was like grandma and grandpa helping out Cassie and everything. So I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, it another- was, but I don't know. I felt like Michael Douglas felt like, I don't know, like a this is a character. man. This is right. This is a man whose brain is almost right up there with Reed Richards. Yeah. And they had him more as the side person, mm-hmm. like, yeah, you know, I'll figure things out with it. With I don't know. I just felt like they didn't really take advantage of that character. Nah, yeah, that's just yeah. Me. They could have done a rewrite and did something a little bit better with it. Uh, there's a lot of they could have was... done a lot of rewrites with this movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there, there was one thing that I really don't like about the movie, and it's how we got Modok. Oh, that's mm-hmm. the only I. Oddly, I could see their point, and it was a callback to the original first Ant Man, and then having reintroducing Darren and figuring out where he was, what happened to him. Well, there's a way to fix this, everybody and folks, and that's because it's in multiverse. There's all different versions of these people, so we could always bring them back. But I don't want to see it like where we had Ego kind of dead and gone now. Ultron mm-hmm. just talked about gone. Great character, but we had it in the What If series. Right. We could still get these characters back if they rewrite them accordingly and give us something to that degree with an alternate version of that particular character. Now, mind you, it was humorous. Yes. You know, especially when Cassie is like, just don't be a dick. Yeah. And all that good stuff. But honestly, they could have <laughs> easily not had that character in there. Yeah. And brought him in somewhere else. I've got some questions about that whole thing because it, it they just didn't it okay this is one of my points really or one of my notes really Go ahead. it just didn't it, the whole idea of him was he supposed to be a henchman was he supposed to be cuz he said that Kang built him but then he said he built the city for Kang and Kang in one scene Kang says you're not to speak when I'm in the room and then he yeah. never treats him like that again like when they're when they're facing the actual thing and, and uh he's explaining to Ant Man what he needs to do, Kang just stands there and doesn't say anything. And mm. I'm like, so what is the relationship here? Is it is it sidekick? Is it henchman? Is it it just in it, it, it it's felt- strange. It it kind of gave me the feelings of like Thor Ragnarok when Thor gets onto um uh, that world, I forget. And mm-hmm. He, you know, he meets all these other people and yeah. he deals with the the grandmaster and all that. And the they try to take a cue from oh, the car. You, you're talking about the car. Yeah. yeah. Right. They try to take that cue from Taika Waititi and how his humor was and how to write that within the movie to give us that within an Ant-Man and the Wasp. And that was my feeling about this. It's like, all right, they're keying it more towards the humor aspect. Yeah, and if they're not going to bring him back as a recurring character, obviously, unless, like you said, Mark, they bring in one from another timeline, they've just taken the whole MODOK thing and like, okay, there it is. Yeah, and I'm just, I'm just like, why did we, why did we need that? I mean, they could have had him in a different kind of suit. They could have had it. It just, they, it, yeah, they could have yeah. had the Patton Oswalt version that we had on TV for a short moment, which was pretty humorous. And they could easily do that again. <laughs> I'd rather have Patton on there. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean, though. It's, it just it just was confusing to me why they why they brought this character in in this way just to drop him. You know? exactly. I think they just did it to have just to have Modok, and it was just real. No, he didn't make sense. Yeah, like yes. you were saying in this whole thing. Yeah, he didn't make sense. The fact that he was, you know, this guy, Darren. Darren, yeah. and you know, and you're like, wait a minute, now he's none of that made sense. Again, yeah. this is just very poor writing, and the fact that they are letting these writers just do whatever the hell they want sometimes. Well, which, it, it's exactly what we were talking about when we were on your podcast, Rob, when we were discussing a lot of it with Kevin Feige now wants it quality over quantity because for the past two years. During the pandemic, we've been getting thrown a lot of Marvel content on Disney+. Plus. Some of the movies, we got a great movie out of Black Widow. I thought that was pr- done very well, and I right. enjoyed that. But, 
you know, they kind of screwed Scarlett Johansson uh, in the end regarding that with money and everything and how they released it because, you know, they should have just basically paid her out. Yeah. In my opinion. But uh, with that, that was done very well. But we had, like, of all things, the Eternals. That mm-hmm. didn't do well at all. And it's one of those where that was well over two hours. <laughs> and that's right. a snooze fest. It put me to sleep. It took me three whole tries not to fall asleep through that movie. But it had its moments. And I could see what they were doing with the story. But they could have, with writing, they could have done it shorter. Mm-hmm. and given us a little bit of a better thing very much similar to this we we could have take the jokes out aside and go to literally the core of the story which we did get some of the core of the story which is the main part the antagonist and the protagonist and what their jobs were plus we got cassie as a i don't know what you would call her i forget what they call her in the comics but cassie does take up the mantle of uh she does um stature i think is uh yeah that's it like that yeah Mm. so i i think they're building up that for the young avengers that are supposed to be coming out at certain points because right we've already got the that aspect out of uh okay Hawkeye, yeah, yeah. After that, okay. because we're looking at that, plus the Thunderbolts and everything else, that they're all coming and leading out of these shows. Another person that I missed though is Jimmy Wu. We saw him briefly at the beginning, having yeah. a meal with with. Uh, but again, I think that's just the same thing. The nature of this of of what happened here, we couldn't get those side characters because how are you going to explain why how he got there? You know, and that's the same thing they said about Michael Pena's character that we we couldn't right. figure out a way to explain why he would be there. And and one so character just, I think would have been fine. Yeah. I can understand not like his entire crew or the entire you know, but at least one character. But I think the biggest thing, my biggest thing, my biggest takeaway on all this is that again, it was I think it was just sloppy writing that was mm-hmm. done. Yeah, because a lot of the characters just didn't again. Michael Douglas, you know, Hank Pym, he should have been smarter. He should have been such he should have been as a contributor to, you know, yeah. whatever yeah. had to be figured out as anybody else. And he wasn't. He was just kind of like, hey, this is Yeah. You know, like at the at the bar, at the bar, he's like, Do you have something back there that'll get me drunk? And the, the bartender's like, sure. And that's then that's as far as it went. And yeah, I just don't understand. Yeah. You know. That that entire part, I, and then of course you have, you know, Michelle Pfeiffer with her, you know, with her character, um, and there's a lot more. What I would say, uh, there's a lot more character building for that mm-hmm. one, for that one but, character, but not nothing with Hank Pym, and I mm-hmm. just thought that was waste. So again, I think that's just sloppy writing. Look, man, they have fucking Bill Murray there, and they couldn't take advantage. <laughs> Of yeah. who Bill Murray is, yeah, they so, use him for what a, a, a five minute, six minute scene or a whatever. six yeah, minute it thing. Was a throwaway but, scene, but it was just kind of one of those scenes that you're like, all right, it was Bill Murray, but it wasn't the best Bill Murray that you get for a very short time. Was in a uh, what was it? A uh, Zombie Land. Zombie Land. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. In Zombie Land, you get him for what five minutes, maybe. Yeah. But fuck, it was a good five minutes. Like it's so memorable in right, that. Yeah. But this, this was just like, oh, you know, this is Disney writing. You know, mm-hmm. thinking this is Disney writing Bill Murray and telling probably Bill Murray how to be Bill Murray when Bill Murray's like going, dude, uh, that's me. Let me and be what, me. <laughs> let me. And what you're writing is not me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> you know, so it's like all of us. I think was saying. I think this movie was just missed a lot of heart. Yeah. While it tried to have funny moments in there, mm-hmm. it felt like two different movies. You had the Ant family doing their thing, and then you had Jonathan Majors doing a different movie mm-hmm. because he was so intense and so you know, yeah. so into the role. And it's just it just felt like two disconnected movies there. Like one, I feel like one actor was just like, I'm gonna play a serious. I'm gonna play it almost Shakespearean if I if I could, and while the other <laughs> actors are right. just going, dude, just relax. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Have you seen the other Ant Man's? 
<laughs> oh my god, Frank, hey, you're here. Frank, <laughs> Frank is here. <laughs> oh, I everybody, you know. <laughs> yeah, listeners, we have uh, somebody who came in from the Quantiverse. His name is Frank Rodriguez. He <laughs> he joined us. <laughs> well, Frank, since you're joining us, <laughs> we already went through uh, our initial thoughts about the movie. What are your initial thoughts? about this movie. I found the movie to be enjoyable uh, in that it was, I, after you listen to so much about it, I went in with very low expectations, especially after seeing Eternals. Yeah. I was expecting something along the same line as Eternals. And that's not what I got. So since that was the case, I was like, wow, this is actually better than I thought it was going to be. However, there are still some things that I sit there and I go, yeah, yeah, that doesn't sit well with me. Um, <laughs> I liked Jonathan Majors as Kang. Uh, I think the overall movie itself was entertaining. It did have some good parts to it. The action was okay. I kind of was like, all right, so now Cassie's the hero of the Ant-Man movie? Okay, got it. Uh, <laughs> and then... You know why is that, right? Because they're going to be getting rid of them. Because they're they're all they're all you know it's all leading towards a young Avenger like uh, young Avengers right yeah, yeah so yeah that's why yeah so yeah the you know that's okay though I mean obviously we've had the Avengers in the form that they've been in for what like ten years now mm-hmm. uh, so I think that's what everybody wants back twenty years what, I mean twenty because years this really, last right? year hasn't worked right. very well <laughs> bring back Chris Evans. Bring yeah. back Robert R- R- DJ. <laughs> well, yeah. they're already bringing back like uh, Robert Downey Jr., aren't they? For like, uh, or that's the room. Ironheart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. Interesting. But we were discussing our, our favorite, well, beginning into uh, specific scenes and things that we found enjoyable, not enjoyable. We already covered Modoc a little bit and what we thought about him. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure <laughs> yeah. Uh, he he. Uh, apparently, Frank feels the same way the rest of us do regarding Modoc. I think that if they had tried to go for something that looked a little bit more like it does in the comics, not like a big bloated face that right. just looks like, hey, I'm looking at this face. You could have gotten that same effect by looking through it by uh, – a piece of glass that was bent a certain way and would have made his head look the exact same way. It was like looking at a funhouse mirror. Right. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? And I'm like, why? Why didn't they just make it more like a more like it is in the comic book, where it's a you know, he, if you see Modoc in the in the comics, he's actually frightening. Yes. You know what I mean? Like he's got a frightening design, and this was more goofy. It just yeah. it's like Mm-hmm. When he had the 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 armor on, that actually was what they they should have just left him with that until like the very end and be like, ha ha, surprise, it's Darren. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a dick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but I'm a dick. <laughs> <laughs> they can't mention twice. <laughs> yeah, we we kind of haven't discussed it yet, and we talked a little bit about Cassie. And one of the things that bothered me all three times watching the movie was when they're initially pulled into the quantum realm. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, Hope and Scott immediately activate their suits to <laughs> save to try and save right. the people who don't have suits. And Cassie doesn't activate her. That really, really bugged me. I understood it was probably just for dramatic effect that they wanted us to learn later that, that she, she had, actually had a suit. But she on. had one. He, she mentions it in the very beginning. Right. Yeah, she so that's what she, he knows she's, she's she knows she's got one. So why didn't she activate her? Yeah. when they're falling, I think they through? were trying to show how inexperienced she was because that was a big part of it, where okay. she wasn't punching the right way and she didn't think right away. Oh, activate my suit. Okay. Okay. I could. I could. I can buy that. I can buy that as a, as a reason why. But it's still. And she didn't activate it until she absolutely had to right. to help save the the indigenous population or whatever. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, well, I, I think it's like Frank was saying is I think that inexperience in her mm-hmm. on when to be whatever it is that she's looking to be now, and when not. I mean, when you got. Um, yeah, and she when learns got, quickly though. She yeah, picks but, everything up really quickly. Yeah, but <laughs> when you got Ant Man and you know and the Wasp, um, their characters, mm-hmm. you could see that it's just instant. They just do it right. automatically. Right. It, it it is just like uh 
it's it's just you know they don't think about it but with her okay. the beginning of the movie a person who's been, been trying to hide right. the fact that she has a suit i'm okay. sure she's you know she didn't even think about it at that moment it was like oh, oh i right. have a I'll suit i can activate i'll cut her some slack for it then i guess <laughs> well, it was very much almost similar to like with kate bishop dealing with hawkeye during the show it's yeah. Like, yeah. inexperienced yeah. with mm-hmm. her arrows and everything Co- else correct and it's and it's just the same too. Hawkeye teaching her at that point. So this right. was pretty much like a teach out moment to prepare us to see what we're gonna get eventually. Okay, all right. Very much like how Disney is trying to reinvent with a lot of things with uh, Daredevil Reborn, where you know they right. flat out tell us now that we're getting Punisher back. We're getting uh, of all things Jessica Jones. Yeah, but is, is it gonna, gonna be? be- they're watered uh, down it, versions of what yeah, we got. It's going to be a lightened show. version of what we have in the net. Because, and I don't, don't get me wrong. I liked the Daredevil that we got yeah. in She Hulk. I, yeah. I really enjoyed that more comedic side of him. So I look forward to it. But it's going to be interesting to see how the Punisher and Jessica Jones work out that way. I as just well. don't understand why they need to redcon some of the best fucking Marvel uh, properties that they've had. I mean, Daredevil, honestly, to this day. Mm-hmm. When it comes to a you know like a you know a multi part series, it's yeah. probably the best one out of all of them. Yeah, out of whatever yeah. Disney Plus ha- has actually you know turned out, the Daredevil stuff from Netflix is better, especially that season one. Yeah, you didn't think Ben so- Affleck Daredevil was better? Hang on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's just I don't know. I just I never. Well, I still have a problem with how they're l- approaching it now, because oh, we yeah. know it, it's it's being filmed. Uh, a lot of the stuff's in the can. I still have an issue for the fact that we don't get Penny. Uh, what's her name? Ah, forgetting. Ooh, the, uh, the assistant. Oh, yeah. the, the the red haired. Yeah, yeah. Uh, her and Foggy. We don't get them. Right. Mm-hmm. All we get is apparently Daredevil. We do get Jessica Jones show up. Rumor is, and what they're talking about with the. The, they talk about Kilgrave in it. It's like she's mm, okay. looking for Kilgrave's kids that have these powers, apparently. But uh, I'm just hoping that leading in, they don't do it on a lighter side like they did with She Hulk. It's a little bit more, right. a little bit more intense. Now, mind you, Hawkeye was a bit intense. It was a bit violent. Yeah, and it had its moments. Same thing with Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and it, Moon Knight. Yeah, and Moon Knight. Yeah, so, yeah. So they could move that up, and then by the time the movies come in, it could be a little bit more violent, a little bit, maybe a little bit more adult because it's PG thirteen. We know flat out that Deadpool three is going to be a rated R film for a Disney right. movie, but mm-hmm. they are able to do that under the other banner that they have. That's why they're not marketing it as like true Disney. So that that's how they're able to get away with that, and that's the whole I point of that. Feel like. Disney is starting to see what they need to do because they've even offered Daredevil one and I mean not Daredevil, uh, Deadpool one and two on Disney Plus. It's just not advertised on the front page. You actually have Correct. to search for it. It's on you know the legacy, I mean? but it's there, right? But you know what? When they acquired all that property and they acquired, of course, you know their um, the Netflix stuff. Mm-hmm. I remember on that update. It'll ask you, do you want to watch things that are rated R on this account? Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah. if Disney's willing to put that in there, then they shouldn't be afraid to do a rated R movie the right way. Yeah. Right. I understand yeah. that, you know, for them, it's, it's, you know, it's going to be tied into the MCU and everything. But if you're going to allow Deadpool to be rated R, then let Daredevil be rated R. Right. right, you know, let Punisher be rated R. Let those things be exactly what they're supposed to be. Because, god damn it, in fucking comic books, they're bloody. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, they you are. know, I mean, they're they're ex- you know, so so for Disney to you know, and especially parents to go, oh my god, I don't want my kids to you know, <laughs> lady, it's in comic books, it's in everything you see. So relax. Getting, getting back to Ant Man and the Lost Quantum uh, verse, uh, Quantum Mania. <laughs> Uh, did anybody else feel that Kang's core was a homage to the infinite improbability drive from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Yes. It's, I, I realized that you know, today. Not watching until it. you said that. 
<laughs> I, I went the, the whole thing about every probability that you could right. you could make is is available. And I the went, only thing that they were it. lacking in this movie is a wet towel. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it, was, it didn't. It took me until the third to the third this third watch today to go. Oh, that's just like it. Jacker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yep. So, okay, yeah, you nailed it. I I I kind of I I had those things in my head as I was watching it, and I remembered I was just like feeling hitchhikers, hitchhikers. But I, I love how they uh, have his little couch, which is a ship, which is yeah. something that they took from the comics as well. But they didn't really sit and ponder on that as much. What they did do and I did appreciate is the multi versions of Kang. Right. And we get them. We get Iron Lad. We get uh, Ramatut. Immortus. Immortus is in there as well. Yeah. So we got those three at the end. That we I see. thought I saw Annihilus too. Was was that the one, the Immortus? Was that the one with the kind of painted face? Yeah. That it looked yeah. like everybody was kneeling, kneeling to as he walked by. It really looked like there were some that were kneeling when he walked by. Uh, as if in, you know. Uh, He's the Rickest Rick. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But that is that did remind me of the the Rick and Rick and Morty as well. That whole <laughs> Citadel thing, and when they're all shouting, and there's some of them are acting right. like monkeys, and uh, it was crazy. That that's a the crazy scroll. scene. And I, I you know, you when know, they the talked scroll about, one, I really loved. <laughs> yeah, uh, when they talked about the War of the Kangs, you know, when Kang talks about how he ended up there, that could make a good movie too. The War of the Kangs, right. you know, how did he how he ended up being the exile would be an interesting. I don't know if that's a future project or not. It could be in the very beginning of Kang Dynasty, and it could actually devote like maybe ten minutes of the history of Kangs. A yeah, really me? interesting uh, movie uh, is going to be where Kang gets his face changed. Oh yeah. well, yeah, we'll Star- talk about that. Oh, one in we'll, a we'll talk yeah. about that news. I'm talking about the other. <laughs> yeah. The one thing that we did get is the legendary look of Kang, though. That's what yes. I really appreciated. It. the The fact that you know the blueness is something yeah. that's from his helmet. Uh, it, it actually ac- accents his scars, which I was glad that right. they did. So we get an actual great comic book representation of what Kang looked like that I grew right. up on and that we all love from that, that costume. Too. Yeah, that costume was it was legendary. And same thing with Iron Lad. I knew right away it was Iron Lad. I knew right away Mortis, uh, Ramatut. And uh, I, I was like on the fat man beyond chat thread. And I kind of mentioned it and everybody else was saying what they saw. And I was looking at it going, Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I forgot that person. I forgot that right. person. <laughs> so it's amazing. It's like when they do, when we, you know, you come together as a community and talk about these things, but there's a lot of things that they try to put in to this, to, to give us that feel. And we also get uh Victor timely. At the very mm-hmm. end, for the end right. credit scene too, and uh, you could see Loki and Mor- Mobius. Mor- Morbius, Mobius, yeah, yeah, Mobius, Mobius and, Mobius, yeah, and you, you could see how the fear in their eyes. So it's that actually segues us into the Loki season two, which is completed, which we'll be getting fairly soon. I hope so. I was just looking today to find out if there was a release date yet, and I couldn't find one. I'm sure they'll they'll bring it up soon. They probably wanted some things to subside first, but also uh, <laughs> at least we have another Marvel property coming out soon for us to cover anyway. So uh, that we'll be covering that when it comes out. That's going to be fun when it comes out. What's the next thing that's coming out? I've not kept up with the news at all. What's the next thing that's coming out? Guardians for Marvel. Oh, Gar- Gar- yeah, right. Guardians of the Galaxy three. three. Yeah. And then after that, the Marvels. OK, Marvel's not supposed to remember. Guardians is what I'm looking. I'm mostly looking forward to. Is that uh, May? Is that May or June? May. I think it's May. May. Because okay. they so. keep pushing that Marvels. They well, they had to do uh, reshoots, and we can talk about that. And yeah. that's pretty interesting. But to concentrate a little bit more on this, the one thing that I really genuinely like too as well, Scott was able to achieve the largest that he's ever been. Right. And we also see Cassie do that. She goes giant mm-hmm. at one point. Uh, I'm still waiting for Lawrence Fishburne's uh, Giant Man to show up at one point <laughs> in the series. I really, I want to see that character. But... Speaking of giants, that was a question I had. How did the ants get giant? Just from leaving their ant farm and going into the quantum realm, they became giant all of a sudden. 
I think they, they, they evolved. Advanced. They evolved, but also you have to think about it. They learned from Hank. Right. So they they could have generated their own uh, PIM okay. article. Over their thousand, year, and thousand made, years in a day. Exactly. Being, okay. Right. Okay. Yeah, because okay. I did say that they like they were at a different time speed or something like that, right. you know, wherever they went. So they got to e- evolve okay. a lot higher, you know, than this. And than ants Hank. already are like that, you know. What I mean, <laughs> soldier ants are always bigger than worker ants and things like that. Yeah. So okay, yeah. right. Now, this is another question I had that I was like, <laughs> <laughs> no, these are good questions. No, it's cool though. That's the whole point of us talking about this. Uh, I just really enjoy it, but uh, I think we kind of gotten through most of it. Unless you guys want to discuss other things, uh, uh, I think I've got everything I had. The only other thing I had was uh, I thought it was it, there was a funny moment in the bar when Broccoli Head tries to pick up on Hope. Oh. He's like, hey, you know, where are you been? And she's just like, uh. <laughs> so I thought that was funny. <laughs> One thing that I have to talk about, and that's it'll be the last point. I got a feeling of the Matrix at the very end. We already saw Scott in the very beginning walking to get his cup of coffee. Same routine that he always does. Right. Which is interesting. So at the very end, he's reflecting in his head in his own uh, narrative and commentary, talking to the audience uh, exactly how he felt. Oh, we were able to vanquish Kang, blah, blah, blah. Or did we? Or don't we? (laughs) But you see, uh, what I saw was very much almost like with the Matrix style. As he's passing people, the same people are coming back around again, like a like on a movie set. So I didn't notice yeah, that. it's it's like as if he was like in an endless loop. Is this something that like a, a world or universe that Kang or the one of the Kangs out there sent them to, and he has the same day over and over again, including his family? I don't know. I I was, I was actually kidding. looking for a Kang. A Kang to walk by in the background. I was that mm. like I was like, okay. He's like, did we beat him? And then all of a sudden, you see Kang like walking by like a regular dude, like just going to catch a cab or something uh-huh. like that. Yeah, that would have been fun. But uh, yeah, that was when he found that he had to pay twelve dollars for his uh, coffee, and he was like, oh, <laughs> you're not the Spider Man, you're the Bug Man. <laughs> right. Well, he got it right th- at the end, so that's what clued me in. That it was like, oh, okay. This is yeah. real. <laughs> but I was waiting for him. Of all things, too. All right. We, we've we already seen. What was the name of the uh, role models movie that Paul okay. Rudd was in? I was waiting for the whole Venti <laughs> thing to come up. What's a Venti? I, I, n- I never saw that movie. So oh, okay. I don't know. that's when they um, arguing about like why is a large coffee called a Venti? Instead yep. of just calling it a large. Oh, yep. okay. Because it means twenty ounces. <laughs> no, and, and he and at the very end, his he's like, "Oh, great! You're stupid in two languages." This is all the girl. <laughs> 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 but I was waiting for that reference point. But they probably were like, "Oh, we don't want to reference any other movies or something." But the fact that he went for coffee. <laughs> but yeah, that that was my last one. The uh, the I like the character. Uh, the the one that was fascinated by the holes. Oh yeah. yes. yes, yeah. Was that yeah, Michael Sarah voicing that character? I'm not sure. I mean, it, it could have been. been. It it's, might have been. I tried looking under the credits on online. I couldn't find it. But you couldn't find it. It sounded uh, just like Michael Sarah. It was just so fun. Like the, it is. <laughs> this this is a part of the movie that I was just like, okay. So that became the cutesy part. Let's just leave it at that. If right. they would have left it at that, I would have been like, okay, that's cool. But no, then they had, they had to have other moments. Yeah. But that was the part of the movie. I was like, all right, that's kind of funny and cute and things like that. I, but, you know, unfortunately, <laughs> this whole movie just needs more rewrites. Yeah. 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 There was just, there were things. But I mean, there were, there were moments that the fight in the bar is pretty cool. It's a cool fight the right. the fights were all i thought the fights were all really great yeah uh, yeah you know yeah. my problem movie. my problem with the movie that the first two movies at least addressed right so whenever he got small you knew that he was small in our world 
right? Mm -hmm. Or when he was big, you could see that this is a gigantic mess. So that's what made it a lot more fun in this quantum realm. You didn't have anything to kind of like to relate to in yeah. order for you to know that he was small. Gotcha. You know, they showed like the camera angle. Oh, the camera angle looks like, you know, he's going, you know, he just shrank or like, you know, of course, to make him look huge, you know, in, in the cityscape. But we couldn't relate to the world itself for us to go. Oh, yeah, he is a giant man. Or, oh, you know, he's, a, you know, he says a little <laughs> right. guy because, you know, as he's walking by, you can see like, I don't know, like a cigarette butt or something like that. You know, mm -hmm. there was none of that that we could relate to. Physical and I think that was my, yeah. yeah, those little references that makes you go, oh, okay, everyday life here on Earth. And I think that's the part that bothered me, especially if it's going to be an Ant-Man movie, because in Guardians of the Galaxy, none of that shit bothered me, but that was actually good writing. But <laughs> 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 I go, always go back to the writing. <laughs> yeah. So. so here's what I was kind of hoping and like if i had a wish list in my head of things that they could have done i would have loved since we're going into the quantum verse and that's what they're calling it yeah. it kind of reminds me a little bit of the microverse and i would have been dying if like the micronauts would have showed up well that's and, why they called it the quantum verse yeah, because they yeah. didn't have the rights to the microverse because the micronauts in marvel was actually insti instituted it's See, that's what, right. really what it was supposed to be. Right. The, the problem is that the, the rights are still uh, for the still Micronauts. To Japan, yeah. still, right. No, it's it's not even Japan. I forgot who it is. Mattel? Was it Mattel? I know it's... Yeah, it, I think it's a single individual. Oh, wow. Really? That owns really? the rights to that. Yeah. And the thing is that, from what I hear, he's holding out. And okay. I'm like, dude, you know what? Now would have been the time. Cause yeah. Hand it over. <laughs> if, if the trajectory that we're looking at is not a good one, <laughs> you know, especially with the MCU. Yeah. You should have sold. <laughs> but no, it just, <laughs> I would have, that, you know what, you saying that, I would have loved to have seen that. I would love to have seen the, mic the Micronauts. If nobody out there knows what the Micronauts is, <laughs> it's a series of toys that came out of Japan. Yep. Like in the seventies, I yep. think. I had yeah. I had my sets yep. when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. I, did too. I, I remember I them. Had I didn't have any. Too. Yeah, I didn't have any. But I remember them. Yeah, yeah but, but they utilized them in in Marvel comics in certain stories. Right. They had them in Swamp Thing, uh, Swamp Thing, Man Thing. Something. Well, they had their own comic, and they had their own comic, yeah. very and much then, like right. Rom. Rom was right. another. Exactly. Rom was another character from a toy that they put into Marvel. Yeah. And we'll Correct. never get to see that, which would have been perfect because Rom was actually in a bunch of key yep. issues with like the Guardians of the Galaxy and yeah. X Men. And the problem is that Rom again is owned by somebody else, and yeah. he's also holding out. But yeah, you know, it's like, look, not many people are gonna like probably, I would say, line up to go see a Rom movie because they're no. like, who the, who the fuck <laughs> is Rom? Yeah, but they can utilize the character in like a group setting. Which is perfect, I think. Right, but you know, for for Marvel to do that, they're they're going to be like, we either buy the whole character outright, or we just don't use them at all. Well, at least hard. that's how I see it. It's like the Incredible Hulk situation. Universal still owns the rights, and it's right, but lending it. And the yeah. the difference is that the Hulk is actually a really popular character, world known. Not yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, right. Rom is just Rom, and people be like, "All right, he's Rom. Who the fuck is Rom? I don't, yeah. <laughs> you know." I remember so the, for the Rom comic and the in the yeah. toy and everything. So I yeah, had them. <laughs> so, I had, I had the toy. I actually, I actually was comics. a big fan of Rom. Yeah, but the Micronauts, I think that would have been great. And the reason for that is because if Marvel, let's say, did own them. Just having them in the background would have been a cool thing. Right. Yeah. Or the fact that they could have been the ones to come to their rescue or something like that. Exactly. Well, would have been that would have been fucking fantastic because then now you're putting the whole microverse universe of the micronauts. Yes. You know, as a thing in the microverse or the quantum verse or whatever it is. And that would have been, I think, a lot more fan, you know, I think fans that know. Who the micronauts are still are yeah you know they will probably be like that's fucking cool i like yeah. that um do we want to talk about the end, uh, end credits before we move on 
Sure. I mean, we, we kind of have already. We talked a little bit about yeah, it. Yeah, I was going to say, we, uh, we, we, yeah. we, we talked about Victor of... Timely and, and uh, the all the different Kangs and uh, what we're going to see coming up with that. So, Well, there was the, the end credit one where, and here's an interesting thing. That end credit from my sources, <laughs> um, they were telling me that that was supposed to be, we were supposed to see the Fantastic Four on that. Mm. Yes. Ooh. I but after test audiences saw the Fantastic Four, they had to go back to the drawing board on that one. <laughs> and, you know, and uh, so they had to do this whole scene uh, with um, with, with Loki. Loki and so, Loki. Yeah, yeah, Loki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had to do because that you nice. could tell you could tell that's something that they could set up like in a in a weekend. They just to do it in. Yeah, this is shoehorn it in. But okay. the Fantastic Four that they, I guess they were showing, people were like, oh, hell no. <laughs> so, well, they didn't even okay. officially give us like who's really casted until recently. Uh, I don't know and, if it's speculation or true. Well, but... here, here's a, here's another interesting uh, tidbit on this. So the Kirby estate, even though. Marvel is the one that owns the Fantastic Four. Right. The Kirby, they have a a uh, some kind of uh, what is it agreement it's with the Kirby estate? Yeah, that the characters will never be changed, regardless of what media they're, they're at. So that means that these four white people are going to remain white because they're supposed to be Jewish. Huh. So yeah, so but we got that one movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what. <laughs> That's um, probably why this clause was put in there. Was put yeah, in there. So, <laughs> so, the, so the so they were going to go way different with the uh, Fantastic Four, and one people who saw it, a lot of them didn't like it, but the the other part was probably the Kirby Estate probably put a uh, a cease and a cease and desist <laughs> on that and go <laughs> either they come out the right way. Or there's gonna, you know, or they're just gonna mm-hmm. sue, you know, for breach of contract or something like that. So, right, I'm very surprised at that. Like I was like when I heard it, I was like, oh, okay, that's yeah. Hmm. All right. But, uh, that aside, uh, let's go to quotes. You guys have any quotes that you got from the movie itself that you liked, or uh, I got, got holes. It. <laughs> um, I, I like the mind reader guy when he said they don't know anything and somebody was like about right. and he said anything they don't know anything about anything so. <laughs> I liked uh, when Kang when he's talking about the Avengers and he goes are you the one with the hammer <laughs> oh did I kill you before and then I, yeah did I have a hammer <laughs> uh, one for me was of all things from MODOK saying it, it's his last words to Scott and he goes, you always were a brother to me. And at least I died. An Avenger. <laughs> and right. he's just, yes. Oh, and my like, God. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we'll go. <laughs> that part was just. <laughs> oh, that was pushing it. Mm-hmm. it yeah. Oh, the uh, other I one like... that he says is like, I'm Darren and I'm not a dick. <laughs> right. Uh, I like uh, from, from Modoc also when Scott is in the uh, in the core and he says, you're you're Schrodinger's you're inside Schrodinger's box and you're the cat. I thought that was great. Right. <laughs> That's a good one, actually. Uh, but uh, the the ending line from the end credits from Victor Timely was pretty cold. Time is everything. It shapes our lives, but perhaps we can shape it. We can shape it. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's showing us the sinister side mm-hmm. of Kang of at least another version. Cause that's Victor Timely, not Kang the Conqueror itself. So, all right. Well, with that, we'll, we'll move on to news. Well, that will be anything that's coming out in the coming future uh, that is uh, Marvel whatever based. Obviously, we know uh, uh, the last time when Rob and Steve and I did something like this, we were doing The Boys, but The Boys is wrapped. Mm -hmm. So we have that to look forward to Mm -hmm. as well. We'll be covering that just like with Loki season two. Uh, But uh, there are other news that's interesting which would be dc related (laughs) 
<laughs> and I'm talking about the Flash. And I find it funny how uh, with all the Ezra Miller stuff that's going on, or has been going on, it's still being put out there for us to go see. Uh, but it's being premiered at CinemaCon, which is, for people who don't know what that is, it's more for people in the business of movie making and the people that are uh, movie theater owners. So that Kevin Smith will be there all happy that he could actually attend and go see it first before anybody else. And uh, all those people that are in the the movie making business. So I, I can't wait to, to hear what people's results are on, on that. Uh, but I, well, but are you looking I, forward to it? I'm interested because it's got me from what I saw from the, the, the trailers, I, I found it interesting. I Come think on. the, I think the flash, I mean, it looks like a very, it looks like a very good movie, at least from the uh, trailers. Yes. I'm just very interested to know how they are, um, how DC is feeling because i know that they when they showed the trailer during the super bowl it was a huge success people were just they couldn't wait to see it right right yeah and then but everybody still knows that ezra miller is in there and i think dc's thing is listen we held this off enough hopefully you know, we, as long as this kid does not do anything and is stupid or anything like that, I know that he still has to probably go to trial. But as long as he doesn't do that, yeah, we could possibly release it around this time. It's been over a year or two before, you know, since he's done some stupid shit. <laughs> and then next thing you know, what happens? Jonathan Majors gets in trouble. Our next piece right. of news. <laughs> <laughs> Which is part of the next piece of news, but I I, I was saying those two relate so well because I could just imagine DC going, shit, if he does something and the MCU kicks him out, <laughs> a lot of people are going to be right. saying, why didn't we do the same thing with Ezra Miller? <laughs> well, they could, like we've discussed this before outside of podcasting, they could easily do that with The Flash. It's called, they have an alternate version of The Flash. Right. They've uh, already met. But with um with Kang at this point, they've been marketing everything on all different versions of the same Jonathan Majors character. We Correct. haven't gotten that one where it's just somebody completely different. It could be some old cr crusty white dude, or they could have like um like a baby version of Kang. Who knows? Uh they could easily do something like that. And they could easily you can have Modoc be Kang. Yeah. <laughs> Darren. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but they uh they, they could easily change those things now that we have this whole multiversal thing that's coming. Yeah, out. no, I understand. It's just I mean, I have to think that Marvel try and of course, you know, Mar being part of Disney, and Disney definitely is vicious about defending their brand. Oh yes. Um, you know, and a lot of people now equate marvel to disney because you know disney right. loves to put their brand on you know hey if i own it just make sure that they know who owns that brand correct um <laughs> excuse me <clears throat> that's it. but that being said i mean it, yeah it's uh it's very interesting to see how they are going to how they're dealing with you know these people that <laughs> they made these movies and the thing is that Loki 2 already has been filmed, I believe. Yep, Loki 2 finished, uh, yep. they wrapped. Right. And so, it's all, and it's centered around Kang, because Jonathan Majors is in it, the full exactly. season. So, so I, I would be very interested to see how... Um, see how it ends. So, yes, see how it ends and stuff like that, so... Um, it's and it, it's just interesting just to see how these two things are gonna affect each other, and and, and I'm gonna just sit back and kind of reel it all in and <laughs> and just laugh because well yeah oh, I think <laughs> like Disney content I think Disney's <laughs> probably gonna literally be at this point they're gonna wait on full final judgment 
on with Jonathan Majors before they actually make any decision. Obviously, Loki Season 2 will still have to come out. They might delay it a little bit based upon everything that's been going on. But I think the judgment will fall before that actually gets released, which is fine. Right. You know. Yeah, no, it's just, uh, I- I'd be inter- I- like I said, I'd be very curious to see what's going on there. Um, yeah. But like we were talking about, you know, just uh, on some of the major things, you know, that were happening in the industry. Yeah. And that's a tough thing to happen because you went from being somebody who you te- you practically couldn't turn on your TV lately without seeing Jonathan Major's face on it, <laughs> whether he's in, you know, Marvel stuff or Creed, Creed or yeah, right. exactly right. And now it's all like tumbling like a big freaking house of cards. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. His career is in, in jeopardy at this point. And it sucks. Yeah. But, it but, sucks. But hopefully things get resolved. The truth will come out. I don't like to pass judgment until. No, no. Uh, the the final verdict comes out on the court case because we don't know. Uh, we won't go into that anymore. <laughs> we'll leave it as is. Uh, <laughs> but uh, next up, Joker two finished filming itself. Uh, obviously, they, it's being called somewhat of a musical. Now, I'm a little jaded on this. I like Lady Gaga as an actress in certain things, but her as Harley was not my first choice. But <laughs> Granted, it was a uh, a particular kind of musical thing that they're doing. Right. She'll fit in. Uh, I just hope she brings it. So those are my thoughts on that. Uh, I, I'm just waiting for it to come out to give my uh, final opinion on it. I thought, you know, so they can't get the other Harley Quinn that we've known so long. Argo Robbie. Yeah. Argo Robbie. Yeah. But we could get her, uh, her also her doppelganger who is in <laughs> something about Earl or what about uh, what what was that name the Jason Lee show? Oh yes, it's uh... my uh, name is Earl. My name is Earl. My name is my Earl. name is Earl. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whatever, whatever her name is in that, uh, she looks just like Margot Robbie anyway, so she could easily have taken up the mantle. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that Lady Gaga, look, when when the Joker was announced in uh in the what is it in a uh, the Dark Knight. Mm-hmm. And it turned out to be Heath Ledger. Everybody right. was like, "What?" Yeah, that is true. <laughs> what are we talking about Heath Ledger? And then he right. became and, one of the best Jokers that we became, ever got. <laughs> he be basically yeah. became the Joker that everybody now looks to. People yeah. used to look to Jack Nicholson. Not anymore. Now it's he. Can he be? They have Heath their Ledger? own areas. You got right. Jack Nicholson, yeah. Joker. Exactly. So and then. When they did Joker and it was supposed to be Joaquin Phoenix, we're like, oh, yeah, Joaquin Phoenix. I mean, I could see him getting into the, you know, but we didn't know what um, what an amazing job he was going to do. So we don't know what, you know, Lady Gaga is going to bring to this role. Right. Yeah. I mean, same here. I have to believe that. I mean, she's a powerhouse in, in her own way and, you know, and stuff like that. I have to believe that. If they're going to do what they think they're going to do, which is this musical thing. Yeah. I mean, why not bring one of the most amazing voices out there to, uh, to participate in that? And I believe that she has the acting chops to, you know, act the range just like Harley Quinn. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, and the things that I've seen her in uh, for her TV work, she's done pretty well. Yeah, absolutely. But. We'll yeah. have to wait and see. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, I was thinking of Jamie Presley. That's who I was. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that, and I was like, "Okay, hang on. she's in Welcome to Flatch now." Yeah, <laughs> but uh, with other DC properties that are coming out to that to look forward to, Blue Beetle, we got that uh, cool trailer yeah. that came out. I'm looking forward to that. I'm I'm very much. It actually looks in pretty it. good. Yeah, you got the I kid never, from Cobra I Kai ne- in it. I would like to say I never grew up with a uh, Blue Beetle, but it was uh, more like I wasn't into DC when Blue Beetle became a big thing. Yeah, right. And Same here. 
So for me, seeing Blue Beetle, I was like, oh, okay. I mean, the costume looks cool. It looks like just like the, you know, I guess the costume in uh in the comic books, but all I know is that the character is what, you know, he's a Latino, uh, like it has a Latino uh, background. Yeah. Yeah. He's Mexican or something. Mm hmm. Oh, he's so, Latino. Yeah. Yeah. So that's all I know. <laughs> that's all you know. Other than that, that's all I know about that character. That's funny. That's yeah. all I know. So for me, I'm just like, all right, I mean, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's pretty funny though that it's, I, I liked what you got. You had Danny Trejo in it, I think. Uh, who else? Right. Uh, yeah. They, yeah. Uh, uh, what's his cast. name? Um, this guy, Lopez. Gump. Yeah, yes, uh, yes. George, George Lopez. George, George, Lopez. Lopez. Yep. George Lopez is in it. So, <coughs> Excuse yeah, me. I'm loving the, but, uh, the idea of it. We'll see what happens. I, think, I mean, I think they picked the right one to go with it, and they're going to go in a way where it seems like it's going to be funny because. Realistically, the, the the whole origin of the Blue Beetle is kind of funny. It's this kid who gets this suit by accident, and he can't get rid of it, but he has to learn how to live with it. So, yeah. Uh, next up, well, uh, well, we you kind of hinted on it, well, Rob, before <laughs> with the whole uh, <laughs> the the end credit scene that got uh, washed out. Uh, we already got a Reed Richards though in Doctor Strange in, in the Multiverse of Madness, right? Which was pretty cool, and I really liked that version. Yep. Uh, whether or not they get him back again, who knows? I but... think that's the problem. I don't know if he want. I think he did it more for fan service. I think so too, because I don't was think he. I don't, him. Right. I, right. I don't think he wanted to like commit to because when whenever you commit to like a part in with a uh, Marvel, it's like listen, you're gonna do about. 25 movies you just keep that in mind that's <laughs> what you contracted really for busy. Yeah, yeah you're gonna be really busy for the next 10 years with shit that's just gonna, is gonna pay you money but you're gonna hate the word marvel by the end of the 10 years <laughs> that is true <laughs> Krasinski is super smart in the way that he's been just working his career period mm, because he, is. he very easily could have been oh you're jim from the office and that's it and he just right. decided, you know what? That's not where I'm going to get stuck. Uh, he, you know, a quiet place. He directed. He wrote. Uh, you know, and it was really good. Quiet place two wasn't as good, but it was still enjoyable. Yeah. And Jack Ryan, the, uh, the Jack Ryan, played, yeah, Jack Ryan, yeah. You know, so no, I think he 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 does very well. It's just that I don't think that it's like you're saying. You know, I don't think that he would commit himself to something right. like that. Mm -hmm. knowing that maybe he wants to do certain projects for himself yep. and it might be on his contract. It's like, sorry, but you know, you got to be available for this or for something, you know, all these things. So, but I mean, at least we got him as a fan casting. I mean, right. now who, who else can we put in there? Well, who knows? <clears throat> there's, who knows? A, there's a lot of people out there, but the, uh, the, there's but they better look Jewish. That's what the Kirby <laughs> estate says. <laughs> well, I think they hit it on. Uh, 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 <laughs> they hit the hammer right on the nail at this point with what is being put around. And I seen it on a couple of YouTubes that they did state that Adam Driver was cast as Reed Richards. Now, do I see that? No. I just uh, don't see it. Yeah, I, don't I don't see, see it that. myself. So I don't know if that was somebody fan casting or. Uh, maybe Adam Drive. Until I hear it officially, I'm going to take it as Rumorville as it should be until we get a full. Because honestly, why would you list Adam Driver as Reed Richards with not having the other important people, which are Sue Storm, Johnny Storm, and Ben Graham? Right. You right. ha want to have all four of them cast. Plus, and there, told. plus the, I mean, the movies. I mean, when did they say that the movie's coming out? Uh, the Fantastic Four, like twenty twenty six, maybe twenty twenty five. So I, 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 I would dare to believe that they haven't casted anything yet. The, the or only reason, whatever why, they did, whatever yeah. they did cast, that they had to go back to the drawing board. I'm sure they haven't casted yet. <laughs> the, the reason why this is coming out is because there's still speculation for the fact of introduction of characters. 
that are going to have movies in earlier Marvel films that are com- projected to come out. Uh, very much like, you know, we, we talk about rewrites and everything else, too. Like, we were <laughs> trying to rewrite Ant-Man and the Wasp and what we could do with it. <laughs> uh, especially when uh, our, our love for Michael Pena and him and him giving a whole retrospective of what happened in the movie. It would have been fun to have his little fast rant of how he talks. Um, hey. they, um, there were issues with the Marvels because people have already seen it. Now they've seen like the first half of it or some without visual effects. They test screened it for people. And uh, a lot of people are having issues with uh, how that worked out. So, Right. There there are a lot of edits going on and re they're filming again for certain scenes. So right. apparently uh there was some sort of people people were getting upset over I guess uh Carol Danvers was in yeah. love yeah, with yeah. with uh Monica Rambo's mother. Photon or No, yeah, and Well with the mother and also uh the daughter. with the daughter. Okay. So, oh, so she was Jesus. Yeah. So yeah, right. So she apparently had a relationship with the mom, uh, and that you know was not really alluded to in any of the Captain Marvel movie. But they're gonna, they're basically saying that they made it a big point to point out that that happened, and that she starts a relationship with the daughter too. Yes. So I uh, think a lot of uh, people who saw that screening walked out and said no, and. It's. I'm not saying they're trying to force the LGBTQ community into Marvel or whatever films. We've already had some of that stuff, and it works out. I think. Right. Uh, I think it. I think a lot of those people who did walk out. Felt it was a little bit forced. It should have been just alluded to, which would have been fine, because they haven't done this with Miles Morales yet with Sony, because in the comics Miles Morales is is gay, and no, he's not. He's not. I was under the impression a lot of people no. tell me. Okay, he had he has a relationship with a uh, Gwen Stacy or Spider Gwen or whatever it is. Spider Gwen. Okay. Yeah. I, so, I guess I I didn't read any of those comics. So. <laughs> yeah, no, I he, didn't either. So I'm just gonna be like maybe. No, because <laughs> I, I, I I decided to read them, and yeah, they they never alluded to that. I mean, okay. The one thing they alluded to, it's more of a. Um, I don't know. Somebody was saying that his uh, his uncle might have been, you know, gay or something like that. But I never saw uh, that, that too. Yeah. Hmm. I don't. My whole thing is if a character was not a certain way in in the comic books, it and shouldn't it, be a certain and way. And it's been work, and it's been yeah, working. Right. It's been working for the last fifty years the way it is. Don't go ahead and change it in for yeah. just a movie. Yeah, I agree. Right? Ain't broke, I agree. Fix it. Right, unless the, unless it is unless it's something that you go, holy shit, that makes so much more sense. Right. Yeah. Than the comic book, then yes, you could say that. But if it doesn't, if you're just doing it because hey, we just want to have every kind, you know what? You have a ton of characters. Yeah. In Marvel now, bring out the Alpha Flight. Bring North Star in. He came right. out, and it was the first openly gay character in a Marvel. Comic. Correct. So you have a ton of characters now that are yes, openly gay. You have other ones that are you know different, you know different colors. That all that stuff. Leave it the way it is in the comic books. That's it. I don't know why they have to change it. I don't know why it has to be this. And then, then they wonder. Well, that didn't work out. You know, we <laughs> sank. 150 million onto this one character that didn't work out onto the next. And it's like, all right, so you ruin the character for people who don't read comic books and you're not going to go back and fix it because it didn't work the first time. Yeah. Which I guarantee you that many people told you not to do that, but you went ahead and did it because your ego is so big. Yes. I'm talking to you Hollywood execs out there. (laughs) (laughs) Look, I see a new vision for this character, and you're like, "Why?" <laughs> well, why? we already have it popular on that vision. We well, do because have we a could vision. Hit... He's white. Yeah. <laughs> well, because then we, could hit, <laughs> we could hit these targets right here. You hit this target, right. this target. We could also hit because in the end, that's why they call it. You know, uh, what is it? Uh, Hollywood. You know, uh, 
Hollywood business or movie business or the film business, whatever you want to call right. it. Yeah. Show business. Um, show business. Fuck. <laughs> Really? Uh, that's what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, but you could tell that that's what it's all about. It's trying to hit all those demographics. Right, and they're trying, trying to, to hit, check off boxes. Yeah, you know, check off boxes just to say, okay, we could get a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But in the end, they just don't see. It. It's like, listen, we've had fifty years of stories, amazing stories. Yes, pick those. Go talk or to the people. Character. Yeah, or, or create a new character. Be bold enough to say, I mean, if you think your shit doesn't stink and you think you have that much power as a studio, create, so let's see about you creating your own character. And if it works, pat yourself in the back because you did it right. Yeah. Well, the, Disney tried to do that years ago. It was a movie called Condor Man. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, you went really far back for that. Wow, one. yeah, that was like wow, really back there. Condor Man. <laughs> Actually, that is a movie were, that we did cover here on Paddle. Were Pixels we in high school? A long time ago. <laughs> we were, yes. Uh, Condor Man is like we were in high school. We were in high school? Holy you shit. You were in high school? Like, wow, okay. In the what 80s? Year was it? It was like 81 or 82. Oh, shit. We were Judy high even school. In, <laughs> Like junior, yeah, you school, guys yeah. were in junior high school. I was probably around that age at that point, too. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh wow, <laughs> man, we're old. <laughs> <sighs> but well, let me tell you something, Sonny. <laughs> <laughs> I still blame the writers, <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, that, that's a little bit of our news this week so uh that pretty much covers everything uh steve had to step out so he's still struggling yeah, with uh with his hand it's been hurting him so we were trying to get this podcast going for a little while we had some technical issues oh, but yeah. it's okay uh that's when frank came in but this is the part of the podcast of where we could hear you guys so rob you could hear me on my podcast, Fantasy Picks Movie Edition. <laughs> See, you had to stop uh, yourself. Yeah, I got to stop myself because people just pointed something out on the logo, but that's in a podcast. But yeah, yeah. that's where you could hear me. I mean, that's what we do. We just go ahead and just have fun with uh, being what we call armchair filmmakers. <laughs> right as we sit there and we tell we tell everyone this is how we could have done it better yeah <laughs> so that's yeah that's what i do that's what we all do <laughs> and frank you could be heard there as well yes i'm on the uh fantasy picks movie edition and i'll be on panels to pixels when mark wants to have me so yeah, exactly or adrenaline cinema podcast which okay. is where you can find me. Uh, find me here, Panels and Pixels Podcast. As always, Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, possibly on Podcastica Podcast, depending on when I'm asked to be on on those, as well as Fantasy Picks Movie Edition when uh, I come in on the table every once in a while. You can hear Steve Brown. He sends feedback to uh, multiple podcasts that are out there that he loves to do because he just loves to get, do his live steving. So that's something to be uh, heard when you get a chance, you guys. I'm sure you haven't heard any of them, but it's pretty funny. It's his literally watching the show or movie with his reactions verbally. And he sends nice. those out. So it, it's pretty cool to listen to Steve do that. Uh, it's not as uh, engaging as what we do here. But when he was out, he was at least giving that out to people. And I just like enjoy it when I get to hear him. So, yeah. But uh, for you guys to send feedback, as always, all you have to do is go to our Facebook group, which would be facebook.com forward slash panels to pixels podcast there when we generally do it. I haven't done it in a while. It's been a while since we did a podcast, but I leave an image of what we're covering. Just leave your comments in the, you know, in the picture below it or below the picture. Put them in the comments below. Uh, you could easily send your email feedback to panels to pixels one at gmail.com so that's panels the number two pixels and then one no actually no i got that all wrong <laughs> it's, okay. it's, we'll cut that out 
It's been a long time, people. So panels two pixels one at gmail.com. So that's panels two spelled out to you, pixels and the number one at gmail.com. You could just send out a regular text to the email if you want, or if you feel you could just record your voice and send it as an attachment. We'll just pop it right in. As always, word of mouth is the best thing to get us noticed to all everybody else and all the listeners. You could easily just tell them and tell a friend. And we could find be found on a ton of pl- many a player of choice, uh, Stitcher, P- Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, all that good stuff. So basically, just tell somebody and they can research it and start to listen. The best thing that we would love is you could actually give us a rating or review, and especially in Apple Podcasts, because that's, uh, I guess, the best way to review anybody, because everybody has some sort of Apple product. Right. Do it now. Do it. Do it now. <laughs> do it now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, other than that, uh, that that was uh, that was the episode. So I just want to thank you guys, uh, Rob and Frank, for being on as well as Steve. That was panels to pixels. And we'll see you on the next panel. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.